Digital Electronics, DE. We're back on activity 1.2.4, sequential logic design. This is the protoboard and integrated circuit physical wiring of the four LEDs that count in binary from 0 to 15, along with the clock signal. This is 30 project points. Just remember, project points are 40% of your semester grade. It requires a Canvas online submission of a professional media recording where the student explains the wiring, the chips, and the LEDs that flash in sequence, counting in binary from 0 to 15. Of course, the equipment you need, all you need are two 74 LS74 integrated circuits, which are the chips, because each chip has two gates. So the first chip is over here. The first chip is connected to the least significant bit and then the next significant bit. And then the second IC chip, the second 74LS74 flip-flop chip is connected to another LED right next to the first two and then the most significant bit. Remember these red wires represent the physical wires that you will breadboard. So if you go to your Canvas page, which you should already be on 1.2.4, protoboard 4-bit counter, you also have this document with the protoboard pin numbers which is here. You should, hopefully you physically have it in front of you where you could cross off or highlight the pins you use. Just remember that our clock signal is DIO3. That wire goes from DIO3 to number pin number 11. Hopefully, hopefully you know where the pin numbers are. You also have a reference sheet here Remember, the half moon part is in between pins number 1 and 14, so the half moon would be here, and you count the pins, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 is always connected to ground, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, on the other side of the chip, 14 is connected to the hot, or the 5 volts, or the high signal, and then your pin numbers correspond here to this document here. And then this first one on my diagram, pin number nine is wired to the least significant bit or the least significant LED, which I'll call, which I'll wire to Y3. So where does that come into play? This physical representation is my breadboard which you will also have access to for reference at the front of the room it's upside down so maybe I should rotate it so you guys could see rotate so DIO 3 is connected to pin 11 and then you wire it properly Pin 9, see I might have wired this differently, but here are your LEDs over here, which then are connected to these LEDs over here in order. Then when you think you physically wired it correctly, remember always to have the 5 volt power to the red rail, the ground on the power to the blue rail, then you have to jump those over to these rails over here. That's what these two wires do. Positive to positive, negative to negative. So it's powered all the way over here. You need your white MIDAC. Input signal and the black cord 
that goes from the MIDAC to your laptop. This uh, mates pretty snug with this green part over here. Don't need to over muscle it in there, just make it snug. Black part of the USB goes here, the other part will go to your laptop. So use this for reference to physically wire it. Follow directions here. Now you need to use MyDAC to generate a clock signal. So I'm just reciting the directions here. When the proto board is plugged in, we're going to use our computer to provide the digital clock signal, the high and the low. So step three, open National Instruments and the NI Elvis MX launcher. So you hit the start button, all programs, National Instruments over here. NI Elvis for NI MyDAC, this one. And then you click on this one, NI Elvis MX Instrument Launcher, which is right here on step number three. Fleet's loading, I think it is. There it is. Select dig out, so here it is. Dig out is digital out. We need to provide a digital output. You might need to wait a couple seconds for the driver to install. And if that happens, you might need to shut this down and reopen it. As I'm creating a uh, tutorial video, Oh, here it is. Then you just follow the directions in front of you, lines to right. When you're connected, drop this down to zero to three. Pattern ramp. I guess this one, zero to 15. Run continuously. Then when you hit run, your LEDs flash just like your binary counter like this where it counts from 0 to 15 the way you verify with your instructor that it is functioning you go on canvas and you submit a video recording of the MIDAC signal and the four LEDs with the professional narration of the student explaining how the LEDs are counting to 15. That sample video is right here. You can see your teacher's counter function. So I would take a look at this. I think mine is right here. Fast forward it a little. So you can see the lights go. Let me rewind it a little. Whoa. Okay. So this is your instructor's video from when he was learning this verifying the LEDs are counting in order. Least significant bit on one side, most significant bit on the other. And you can see the frequency. So, enjoy, have a lot of patience on the physical breadboarding, the wiring. Yes, it does take a lot of patience knowing where the pins are, cutting your wires, this might feel like inception you're watching a tutorial video with the video but this is our goal notice how I wrote down my pin numbers here that might help you out and then hopefully this 
table of binary numbers along with the flashing LEDs show you how it counts in decimal. Thank you for your time.